<laughs> Dear viewers, thank you very much for paying attention to what I, I have to say. Um, we are drawing to the close of the year 2023, and it is my pleasure to um, send this word to my readers, to my supporters, to those of you who are unrelenting in your support for what I do, one, as a writer, and for my students. I call my nieces and my nephews for their support and everything they do for me. 2023 has been a wonderful year because your unrelenting support has been for me not just a drive but a catalyst and you might wonder why uh, I say this in 2023 your support your admiration and your praises and things you have shown me the affection for the work I do, yielded so many fruits. I will talk about the fruits of the works that were published in 2023. I'm not talking about the ones that have been completed or are completed, finished writing that are now left to age like good wine for posterity, I just want to thank you. First, you would ask how many works did Bill F. D. publish in 2023? I would like to start by telling you, I have, thanks to your support, thanks to your encouragement, Thanks to you standing by me and even those of you who research on my works, sending me questions to answer, asking me about my writings and everything. In 2023, I had the privilege, thanks to your support, of publishing four books. I will start with the books in translation. I have three books in translation. The first to be published is this book, which is translated into French from Nyamjo's, Francis Nyamjo's The Travails of Diodoné translated into French as Les Déboires de Dieu Donné. You might want to ask me, why waste your time translating a work into French? I would simply respond to those who have questions that besides the fact that I write in the English language and the French language, I think there is need for the French speaking audiences around the world to get used to some of the writings that are produced by the English speaking Cameroonians of Ambazonia extraction or West Cameroon from Southern Cameroon's extraction. I say this because all too often their writings are ignored, they are not heeded with a simple excuse, maybe that the French speaking African, the French speaking Cameroonian does not understand the English language, they can read, the, the writing is inaccessible. So my strive as a writer as a translator, 
as a historian of ideas and mentality and historian of literary criticism is to expand the readership of whatever literature I find to be of interest, not just to a tribal faction of this world, but to humanity. And Nyam Jo's The Travails of Diodone is one of such works that speaks to the situation that we are living globally. And I thought it was wise to render it into French to grow the readership. So the, tra the Travails of Diodone is translated as Les Déboires de Diodone. And the next book that I published equally from an English speaking um, Southern Cameroonian author, Emmanuel Frodo, and his book, originally entitled Boundaries, is translated and published as Les Seuils de l'Intolérable. This work, from the title in English alone, it tells us about the various boundaries within which we are either hindered or we are kept prisoners without paying attention. But those boundaries are boundaries that have to be shattered. So uh, that's the second work. And the third is a Quaker journal by Josephine Mellon Ayer, whose ancestors were the founder of the city of Ayer, Massachusetts, and she was a Quaker and a philanthropist and a sociolite who did great things and left a journal which for many decades or more than a century had been ignored. But her journal piqued my interest because she did not forget the radical uh, pursuit of the Quaker movement in making sure that the world was a peaceful place in which human beings lived as equals. So that is the third work that I had for you guys. And each time any of this work came out, you were very supportive you were so enthusiastic and this kept me writing more and more and over and above this other book the quotable uncle is a book of quotations these quotations i know somebody would ask me how do you sit and you write books of quotations these are reflections philosophical reflections, uh, reflections that should give us something to mull, think about, and fashion our lives after. And I thought it necessary because I find myself as an academic while teaching students, giving them advice, using adages, sayings, and I thought it would be nice for me to put together these sayings so that the students or any other person could benefit from them. Having said that, the book, The Quotable Uncle, I dedicate it to my nieces and my nephews, those I target as readers of this because they are at the origin of me sitting and writing these quotes. I know I will be remiss to end this thank you note 
while welcoming 2024 without giving you a sample of some of the quotes here in present. I would read a few of the quotes and maybe expand shared a little bit on each of them or on some of them, but the quotes are not meant for me to give an interpretation or to explain because the quotes are open-ended and each and every one of us as readers can make or take away something from it. And I just want to rem remind our viewers here that as a poet, I don't believe in the fact that a poem or a writing means something. The meaning of every writing is what the reader brings in to the writing. So I would read a few of these quotes before I call on to you to stay in tune for what will be coming up in 2024. Let's look at the book. Let's look at the quotable uncle. One of the quotes, I'm just picking them at random. One of the quotes the page I open talks about passion, persistence, perseverance, and patience constitute the keys to effective performance. Now, I am, it so happens that two days ago, I'm talking to one of my nieces and she clearly states that since she read this quote, she realizes her life is structured around passion, persistence, perseverance, patience, so that she could gain optimal performance. And this quote, I would emphasize a little bit because somebody might just think those are words thrown on paper. These are not words thrown on paper. It is rather advice given to people that if you were to engage in any pursuit in life, remember that you must evaluate your passion for the pursuit. If you indulge in any pursuit for which you are not passionate, then the pursuit is dead on arrival. However, your passion for a pursuit does not guarantee realization. Why doesn't it guarantee realization? It doesn't guarantee realization because you would have huddles, hoops and loops to jump, to get there. And with such huddles, hoops and loops, it could be frustrating. It could call for you throwing in the towel before the game has started. That is why you would need to be persistent. And if you persist in the pursuit, there would also be some challenges on the way that would frustrate you and make you want to give up just when you should have persevered. So such challenges will call for perseverance. And if you persevere, there is still no, not guarant no guarantee because you might seem to think it is taking too long. I was talking to a colleague of mine who is engaged in writing equally and his frustration is about the writing taking too long. He should have completed it before this or that time. And I am like, no, 
this is where you have to exercise patience. If you exercise patience on your passion, say with your passion, you persist, you persevere, and exercise patience, then and only then can you perform optimally. So I would pause there and go to the next quote, which I want to pick randomly equally. And this next quote is interesting. It reads, trapped in the midst of crookedness and perversity in a nation, the poet becomes the moral voice and light to shine the way out of the dark, corrupt and corrupted world. Well, interestingly, this is just a note to those who might think poetry is difficult to read, it is difficult to understand, that when you're reading a, a, a poem, or when you're reading the work of a poet, you should remember that the poet is not just there to flabbergast or to overwhelm you with words. The poet is there because he is your, the moral voice of a society. And given the state of the world today, we need poets and poetry more than ever before. So let's continue with another quote. And the, other, the, the next quote simply points out a problem with the former colonies. And we sit, blame nations that were colonized and when I talk of nations that were colonized, some people will tell me, oh, don't tell us about colonization. France must have been colonized by the, by, the, by the Romans, by the Greeks, by this, by that. Yes, but this is not the imperialistic colonialism of the 19th century. I'm looking at the 19th century colonialism that divided Africa and other parts of the world for mercantilistic and uh, exploitative purposes. And I say that these colonies were designed by expert thieves and handed down to excellent thieves who parade themselves as excellencies. Because there is nothing more than the aberration when you listen to some of the corrupt leaders of the world in these former colonies going around, vaunting and touting themselves as excellencies. And you ask, how excellent are you in a nation that you have allowed corruption to run rough? shot. So let me go to, let me pick another quote. And here, the next quote is one that reads, no one is free from prejudice. That's a statement of fact. It is a platitude. However, the wise explore their privileges, their prerogatives, and possibilities. Why do they do that? They do that in order to progress in a peaceful environment worthy of human integrity. And I would end with one last 
quote before I pause. And this quote talks about the four eyes leading to invention. If you miss any of the, the four eyes, there is no way you can invent. Most people think invention is something you just wake up in the morning and you do something you've invented. No. Invented calls, or whether invention calls for imagination. If you imagine something, don't limit yourself to the imagination. Take interest in it. If you take interest in your imagination, investigate that imagination. If you investigate the imagination, then you would need to invent, whether invest time. So the four eyes that lead to invention is imagination, interest, investigation, and investment. Meaning you let your imagination lead you to that which you want to invent. Take interest in that which you want to invent. Investigate that which you want to invent. And invest in that which you want to invent. The result undoubtedly is successful invention. Thank you very much for paying attention to this brief video celebrating the end of 2023 and welcoming 2024. And I hope as we welcome 2024, you would continue to show your support as you have done in the past years. So there would be many, many other works to, to come. And just a spoiler alert, I just completed the volume two of the quotable uncle. And that volume two, it might take a while to come out, but hey, you want to get your copy of the quotable uncle, give it as a gift, share it, have people read, and don't let the world continue to parade the prejudice that blacks don't read. Read and read authors that write about things that interest you. Don't read because the mainstream media makes it mandatory that certain authors must be read at the expense of other authors. I wish you well. I wish you a happy new year 2024. And I look forward to having and hearing commentaries from you, my viewers. If you watch this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, like the video, comment. Don't just watch the video and not comment. Please comment and contact me, shoot me an email, and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a blessed and wonderful one. Happy New Year 2024. Thank you. Bye.